Well, good morning, Lionhearts. Gerald Paltrow and the Lion. We are back in Paris still, and today I want to do something very special. I'm actually going to cross off number one on my bucket list before the end of today on things I wanted to see in my life. But first, I want to take my customary trip to Père Lachaise. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. All right, let's go roam through the city to get there. If you've been watching me for any length of time, you know exactly what number one on my bucket list is. Every time we come to Paris, we at least go by there, but this time, we get to stay there and spend the night. Perhaps a little bit morbid, but can't help it. We have a little bit of a transfer. There we go. Now there's two graves I always customarily stop and see here. As we all know, Oscar Wilde and Jim Morrison. The reason I always stop and see them is because I just I love their mind. I love the writing that they left behind and they have a connection to where we're sleeping tonight. And if you can have a favorite cemetery, this is mine. We're going to take the entrance down here to the right. That's closer to Jim Morrison. They're buried on basically two opposite ends of the cemetery. So needless to say, Paris has been a long time artist refuge. Seen a lot of oddities in my time, but a sofa perched out right in front of the entrance to Pierre Lachey is a new one. I've been here enough times, it shouldn't be too hard to find. And if you're new here, they have a map of where everyone's buried right here. It'd be kind of cool if I ran into the couple that I ran into the first time I was here that took me around and showed me where everyone was buried. They were great. And many, many, many famous people are buried here. Chopin, Balzac, Jim Morrison, Oscar Wilde, Edith Piaf, Simone Signore, Yves Montand, um, George Millais. And these are the two most visited graves here at the cemetery. Oscar being the most. If I'm not mistaken, Jim is right over here somewhere on the other side of these. I'm gonna take this way. If you'd like to see some other people that are buried here, go look at my Pierre Lachey video from about a year and a half ago. We went to a lot of graves that time. Here's Jim's grave. It's had many different tombstones since he's been here and it's crazy that he's even here because that wasn't his wish or anything. It was just that, well, the speculation was that he actually died of an overdose and that Pam had drugs in the apartment and she didn't want the cops to come snooping around. So she pretty much buried him as quick as possible because Ray Manz Eric said in an interview that he never, no one ever saw the body. He said, we had people constantly like telling us that Jim had been killed in accidents or car wrecks. So that was like, we, we were used to hearing that. So we sent our manager to go make sure he was, he was gone. And when he talked to us, he said, when I got here, they were burying him and they're like, and Ray said, you never saw the body? And he said, no, I never saw the body. So they had originally put just a, a black headstone the cemetery put it there and they even misspelled his name I think they had two A's it was Douglas James Morrison and um, and then that was stolen years later a fan put the bust that everybody used to see here and then that was stolen so now this is behind a barricade this is as close as you can get and that's where Jim's buried They always talk about moving him back to the States because they have so many problems with people coming to this grave and stealing things, desecrating it, but there he is. And I'm going to leave some of my beads here for him. If you actually read up on this, it's a pretty sad case because um, the story that everybody was told is that he died in a bathtub, his heart stopped, he had you know heart failure, a heart attack in the bathtub, and that's 
what killed him, but he, there was a club owner that said, no, Jim was in my club that night, died in the bathroom of my club, they took him home and then called the police then. And like I said, it was because they said that there were drugs in the house, they didn't want to be investigated, so Pam, there was never an autopsy, nothing was done, he was put in the ground uh, within just a few days. He was given the cheapest casket box there was. Um, Pam inherited, you know, I think believe everything after that, but they said that the service was like less than five minutes long when it was over, everybody dispersed. Um, nobody hung around, there were no special moments, no special words from his friends. It was just a hasty grave, or a hasty funeral, and, uh, and he was gone. Ray Manzarek even said even after we were told he was gone, and even after they had the funeral, the band, the Doors, we didn't necessarily believe he was gone. We just kept practicing, waiting for him to show back up, and, and he never did. But you could tell in that interview with Ray Manzarek, you can find it on YouTube, you could tell even then he wasn't necessarily convinced that Jim was gone. Like he said, unless somebody could verify it, I just have a hard time believing it. Jim, he said, if anybody could have faked his death, it could have been Jim. Now I want to go visit Oscar. And their connection is that Jim Morrison, while staying in that last apartment that he was pronounced dead in, was asked to leave during his stay there because the person who actually owned the apartment came back into town. So Jim and Pam went and stayed in the room that Oscar Wilde died in, which when Oscar lived there it was called the Hotel de Alsace, but now it's called Le Hotel. So Jim and Pam stayed in that room, Oscar died in that room, and tonight we are staying in that room. So the couple that I met here last time told me the story behind this. They said that really nobody can get a plot here anymore unless you pay a ton. So some guy wanted to have this as a, it's not even his grave. He just wanted to put a camera in here that you could come and scan that barcode and you could see it online. What was going on right here? I'm kind of surprised that Pierre Lachey would let something like that happen, like a gimmick, you know, in a consecrated ground. And this is the grave of the painter Jericho that we're passing. If I'm not mistaken, the story that the couple told me was that he was a painter who was injured in a horse accident, like a horse riding accident. So he had to spend the rest of his days painting lying down. Then I want to leave Oscar the beads that I got in Toledo, Spain. And I brought another set that I'm going to start wearing when we get to the hotel. That'll be the first day that they start getting their mojo again. He must have been a musician. Sadly, this cemetery is widely known for grave robbers and people opening up crypts. That's why so many doors are broken open here. See, take a look at that door. That didn't happen by the wind. There he is. He would have loved this. He always has visitors. He always loved to be the center of attention. And here you can see they had to put protective glass because so many people would kiss the monument that the, the fat from the lips was actually wearing the stone down and the family was having to clean it constantly so they had it replaced or they had that put up to kind of discourage that. So now people just kiss the glass or they jump up above it and kiss anyway. And this was modeled after Osiris. Oscar had a very, very sad end. It was really a shame. This was a guy who really all he wanted out of life, as he would say, was to sample every piece of fruit in the garden and to be considered brilliant by the world. And he pushed that and pushed that to a point that eventually landed him in prison for two years of hard labor. And I had never heard this, but they said, I read something recently, they said that he actually died of a long-term ear infection, and they, they think 
that he got that while he was in prison he was um, malnourished and overworked and one day he was um, basically fainted while they were out working and fell on his side um, and punctured his ear and they said that that is what they think the long term um, I don't know that sounds weird to me because he was out of uh, jail for a couple years before he died so who knows to me he was definitely the most brilliant thinker of all time I think his philosophy on everything was just kind of it was out of the ordinary but it made sense in in its own way so I never come to Paris and don't stop and visit this is priority number one every time I come for Oscar whose words are forever immortal and a guiding light to writers everywhere there is no greater pleasure than to be impacted by a story of Oscar Wilde I am the better storyteller writer and human for his work that's a really good drawing someone did of him there then you'll see here that it says respect the memory of Oscar Wilde and do not deface this tomb and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave him my beads so I want to leave my beads right up on this little ledge right up here and there they are for him and if you want to know the story of how this tomb came about because Oscar died penniless there's an interesting story about how it came about, who designed it, and what happened to the testicles that used to be on here. Go watch my Last Days of Oscar Wilde and Jim Morrison vlog to find out about that. Now let's go check into Lay Hotel. That's a bare arm now. Check out that awesome Space Invader art up there. Right in the dead center of the bunny stomach is a Space Invader. I decided to take a little French break here and have a little dessert and coffee. Oscar definitely would have wanted this. This is the kind of stuff he lived for. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, to stay in this room tonight is one of the single most expensive things I've done for anything like this, for like a one-time event. It's insanely expensive, but it's been number one on my bucket list for literally 15 years, so just had to bite the bullet. All right, we've made it over to the Riva Gauche district. You can see the Eiffel Tower over there. This was known as the Latin Quarter. And when Oscar would come visit any time in his life, he would almost always stay in the Riva Gauche. He had two favorite hotels. The second being the one that he stayed in at the end of his life, and that's where we're going now, Le Hotel. Love locks supposed to write the initials of you and your love on there and they'll stay in love forever here's a great statue of Voltaire so for the last two years of Oscar Wilde's life he returned here to Paris one of the only cities that he felt ever truly accepted him he was a broken man by this point and would spend his days he would wake up have coffee eat bread and butter go out walk around then he would eventually have a cutlet for lunch. He'd have some coffee and cognac the rest of the day, and he would just roam the streets, hoping to run into people that knew him, or the few people that would acknowledge him. See, by this point, when he lived here, he was no longer known as Oscar Wilde. He was known as Sebastian Melmoth, and even his sons were taken away. His wife wouldn't allow him to see his sons anymore. She changed their last name to protect them to Holland. It was a sad last few days here in this hotel. And here they have a plaque right outside before you walk in of Oscar's face. Here's the front lobby. And we will be soon going up to our room. They just brought me out a welcome tea. We're going to take the elevator up. And they checked me and they said, did you make this reservation yourself? And I said, yeah. And he goes, okay, so you know where you're staying? And I said, yeah. He goes, you're going to have a great night. You're going to have a great time. All right, here we go. As soon as you open the door, you're greeted by a beautiful painting of Oscar. Into the bathroom. And one of the cool little perks to this room is that you get um, a private hour in the hotel pool and sauna. So 
in the morning from I believe it's 10 a.m. to 11 I have the pool to myself there's the bathtub look at that And another sink. Here's our toilet and a shower. Now we're going to head into the closet right here. It's got the mini bar. And here we have the clothing closet. You know what's in there, nothing right now, but. So now we're going into Oscar Wilde's death room. This is where he fell ill and made the comment to his landlord here, I'm dying beyond my means, because he had no money. But it was in this room, in this bed, that Oscar made his last words and said, this wallpaper and I are fighting a duel to the death. Either it goes or I go. I'll take a look at how they've decorated this. Look at that wallpaper, isn't that amazing? to actually see the Oscar Wilde wallpaper. It's amazing. And look at the ends of the bed, the little swans. Now I really love this. They have some cartoons of him, the actual drawing from Vanity Fair that they used. There he is. And this is announcing that he's been released from jail to resume his career as a playwright. However, a lot of people didn't want to do his work because of his name. And then those who did want to still perform his plays and do Salome and things like that, their shows sold out. They were rewarded handsomely. Look at this of Oscar. So in his last days, he was rather broke and his best friend Robbie Ross would give him a small allowance to live off of and after Oscar would die he would be sadly buried in a pauper's grave because he was so poor and Robbie Ross ended up paying off all of Oscar's debts he got back the rights to Oscar's writing so that he could um, go out and promote Oscar's work and keep it alive. And then he had Oscar move to Père Lachaise where we saw today and had that great gigantic mausoleum type fixture that he's now encased in there. But that is exactly where the bed would have been. This was not a nice fancy hotel back then. It was actually quite a dive, quite a, quite a dump, they said. Now, let's go out and I want to show you a couple more things. A couple more cartoons of Oscar here. Hand drawn in his last days. What a sad ending. I mean, the best way I can describe Oscar is he's a person who loved to push the boundaries. 
and really what he wanted out of life was he wanted to experience everything full throttle and that meant getting under people's skin if he had to or just being over the top and here we have some actual writings these are some of these are from the hotel you can see hotel de Alsace. these are to sebastian melmoth which was his name telling him how much he owed his hotel bill here you can see the bill totals up to two thousand six hundred and thirty four dollars in 1900 he passed away on november 30th of 1900 so here's oscar's signature in a response take a look at that chandelier and that's something now let's go out and check out our private terrace i have not seen this stuff yet so you're getting first view with me Very nice. You can see the rest of the hotel. You almost wonder how many times he would have sat out here on this little terrace smoking a cigarette thinking of if he had the ability to be an artist still, what would he do? He pretty much said he lost much of his inspiration after coming out of jail after the hard labor. I wouldn't say I feel a haunting presence, but I do feel some sort of presence in here. I do feel, I don't know, there's a comfortability in here. Here's the personal menu for the room. Everything in moderation, including moderation, Oscar Wilde. Now one other thing about this room is that Oscar Wilde was raised Catholic. And then throughout his life, he wasn't sure that he'd ever been baptized. He thought his mother may have baptized him, but he wasn't sure. And one of his wishes was to be baptized a Catholic. And on his deathbed, he was baptized a Catholic. Robbie Ross was able to make that happen. So I brought my rosary that I got at the Vatican in Rome. And I'm going to have it sit right here on the nightstand for tonight. There. That's better. I just opened up the bookcase and look at some of the dates on the books inside there. I can't believe I'm in this room and I can't believe I'm looking at that wallpaper. The peacock's kissing. Now what I wanted to do while I was in here was I wanted to tell you a couple of my favorite Oscar Wilde quotes. And then, probably my favorite writing of his is De Profundis. It's a letter that he wrote while he was jailed. But he also wrote, when he came out of prison, he wrote something called The Ballad of Reading Jail. And that was a story that he composed of a man who kills the person that he loves and is sentenced to die. And I chose a few little scripts from that I'd like to read to you since we're in that room. So my favorite part of the Ballad of Reading Jail is a few scripts in and he says, Yet each man kills the thing he loves. By each let this be heard. Some do it with a bitter look, some with a flattering word. The coward does it with a kiss, the brave man with a sword. Some kill their love when they are young, and some when they are old. Some strangle with the hands of lust, some with the hands of gold. The kindest use a knife because the dead so soon grow cold. Some love too little, some too long, some sell and others buy. Some do the deed with many tears, and some without a sigh. For each man kills the thing he loves, Yet each man does not die. He does not die a death of shame on a day of dark disgrace, nor have a noose about his neck, nor a cloth upon his face. 
nor drop feet foremost through the floor into an empty place. He does not sit with silent men who watch him night and day, who watch him when he tries to weep and when he tries to pray, who watch him lest himself should rob the prison of its prey. He does not wake at dawn to see dread figures throng his room, the shivering chaplain robed in white, the sheriff stern with gloom, and the governor all in shiny black with a yellow face of doom. And if you're wondering exactly what kind of wallpaper that is, it's called paint. It's painted on. Look at the jewels for eyes. So if I'm not mistaken, one of my other favorite people also stayed in this room, Anthony Bourdain. I wanted to read you a quote that Oscar Wilde says about death and the Canterville ghost. He says, death must be so beautiful to lie in the soft brown earth with the grasses waving above one's head and listening to the silence, to have no yesterday and no tomorrow, to forget time, to forgive life, to be at peace. Leonard, I'm sending that one out to you, buddy. I know that you would have wanted to be here, and I know you would have watched this vlog, and I know, you're, I know you'll see it. So we're going to start wearing the new beads in here now. Start it out in this room. And look at the fireplace, Oscar. They even put your initials there. Oscar Wilde. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I hope if you've never read anything by Oscar Wilde, you will. He, as I said, not only my favorite writer, but my favorite thinker, my favorite philosopher. I understand his personality very well. And I think we can all learn from his life. He was a man who really, really just wanted to be exceptional. And in the end, he had his whole life ruined by it. One of my favorite quotes by Oscar was when he said, A man who does not think for himself does not think at all. And the other one was, I can resist everything except temptation. I think that summed up Oscar Wilde perfectly. From Le Hotel, formerly Hotel de Alsace, the last room of Oscar Wilde. Have a great night. And goodbye.